It's a very special Tuesday. It's our sixth anniversary show, otherwise known as episode 308 of Trekland Tuesdays Live. Boom with me, Dr. Trek Larry Nimichek, coming to you right here from the heart of Trekland through Portal 47 and by way of Trekland Treks for some sanity, clarity, and the big picture in all things Star Trek. We've got hopefully a special show today it's our sixth anniversary show so thank you scott for the special logo it's right up there too yay boom i've got a poll if you're on my newsletter list and you can do that over at larrynimacheck.com get on my newsletter list and usually at least once a month maybe more i get out a newsletter with what's going on in trekland and maybe some views beyond what you get here or on my blog we normally have a flash poll, just a single question, single answer poll. And I like to share those here on Tuesdays Live. And we had a, a doozy for the first time in a long time last week, a simple doozy. And I'm going to share that in a little bit. Also, we also have a drawing. And if it's too late now, but if you got in, if you registered with a comment on any of my YouTube channel, so I can see it, I can see all the recent comments on any video and you're subscribed, but for the drawing, we're gonna do this a little bit later. I'm keeping my eye on the clock because we might have a special guest bopping in with the tech allowing, the wilds of Hollywood allowing. So the poll, I'm hoping, which the question was, what is your favorite era of modern Star Trek? And by modern, I mean post 2017, Kelvin movies were six hours spread over 10 years. They're not even done yet. They were always kind of just like a placeholder. They're treading water. They were great to get a lot of you involved. A lot of folks came to Star Trek through the Kelvin movies. Uh, thank you. And they they kind of placeholdered for the mainstream media who loves to talk about how franchises are dead and, you know, nattering nabobs of negativism. Thanks to my old friend Sparrow Agnew coming up with that one. And you know what? If you're watching us later, um, I wish you could have been here live, but even then, uh, drop a comment, of course, and uh, I will get back around and answer when I can. I'm going to keep you in suspense about the poll <laughs> and for sure keep you in suspense about the drawing. And as I do that, here's a good chance to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our Patreon folk. Hey, this is my Patreon. It's very small and simple, but effective. Thank you all. My TTL clubbers. Thank you so much to Diana Hapkins, Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, and marie Siegel, Justin Porteous, Glenda Bruton, Chris Jiggins, Pranakasha Productions, Comedy Forecast, thank you, Clint, and Andrew Jasimski, and our live wires, Robert McLean, Byron Bailey, J.R. Poole, Herbert Goodjohnson, Alan Hohensey, David Gregory, Tobias Rex, Donna Runyon, and Casey Shavsky. Hey, um, yes. They're on because they can add a little bit to the Patreon. I want to thank you all for that. If you want to know about the Patreon, you can find me very easily. There's two levels, the $5 and the $10. You get a shout out and the $10 folks, it's time for me to renew this. Get access to the early behind the stage interviews from the first few years of Portal 47, which is now itself going on. Oh my gosh, it'll be uh, seven years itself. No, that can't be right. 23 it'll be eight years this fall anyway did you see that it's patreon.com slash trekland live that's how to get in so i want to thank you guys for that gang i'm just going to bring this guy in this is going to be interesting hey bill can you hear me hi larry good to good to see you good to see you Hey, everybody. This is Bill Wolkoff, who is senior on staff at Strange New Worlds, but he's not right now. We congratulate you. I feel like an old school magician, uh, Bill, because I want to say, now, sir, you and I have never met before in real life prior to this moment. Have we? So hard to hear out here. I just had to put in my ear buds. I oh, okay. Now I can hear. Now I hear you well. Okay. <laughs> good. 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 No, I, well, that's good. Hey, we're pulling this off because you're in the wilds of Hollywood there on the picket line. I, you're, I I'm yes, we are at CBS TV City right now, uh, you know, where our picket has been going for uh, the last, uh, this is day 15 of our picket. Um, and uh, uh, so you're, yes, you're, you're getting a writer on the line right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, the only thing you missed when I was bringing you on, introducing and saying you were one of the 
elder writers in the room at Strange New Worlds, and congratulations <laughs> for that. Well, I mean, yes. I mean, I, on the I, ladder. I, I, I am I am an, uh, definitely one of the elder writers in the in that room. Yes, <laughs> I, did, I I meant by the the writing ladder. I meant uh, yeah. no. I uh, the only thing I said was I feel like an old school magician because I wanted to say now, sir, we have never met before this moment live. Although we've been talking on on Instagram, I think messenger one of the messengers. I saw a post today from some writer who ba basically said they estimated how much the studios were losing every day of the strike, and after. 15 days like 50 40 million a day or 50 million a day. anyway the amount so far they lost was more than what the writer's total package for three years amounted to which puts it all kind of in context yes we we uh i mean this is this is a a uh it's a labor action uh it's about labor relations um where i'm out here uh fighting because uh the way that studios and companies use, use streaming services now, uh, mm -hmm. they have found ways to diminish the role uh, and presence of writers. Um, and the middle class and writers is finding it harder and harder to make a living. Um, it's most writers in my position are lucky if they work 10 to 20 weeks a year. I will, I will say that I'm one of the lucky ones uh, that working on, on Strange New Worlds, our, our showrunners fought very hard uh, to uh, make sure that, that the writers get to stay on and produce their episodes. And to Paramount's credit, you know, they, they, you know, they, that, that um, they, they always signed off on that. But that's, that I'm, we're, I'm kind of the exception that proves the rule. There are more writers that I know uh, that work just, you know, a small fraction of time when writing is still happening on, on the shows uh, and they're rolled off. Um, and it's, it's what's happening to our profession is that uh, writers who work so hard to get into the guild and start writing professionally find that it's impossible to make it a career where they, where they only have one job and they still have to hold multiple jobs in order to make ends meet. Um, and that's because of the ways that studios and companies uh, really the streaming services and the tech companies and the Wall Street mentality that's that 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 drives uh these companies well i don't want to they're all a unit they're all it's was it's i have to stop and think it's the am tpt it's the ampt amptp yeah that's the producers trade, are that's everybody trade union. but really what's driving this is all the new players in the room netflix and and prime and i mean i, I they you have to keep one side of the table and the other side of the table but you, what you're just saying there is all the new boys in the game are the ones who are kind of driving this and 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 the revolution going i mean as an audience people go oh the streaming shows seem the quality seems higher or gee i sure miss having 20 episodes a year i have to wait a year to get 10 more of my favorite show and that's the audience perspective but that all all that revolution has a real world impact on on not yeah. just the writers i mean the actors and directors and iotsi crew are all waking up to what this yeah. means to do and I, I to that i would say it's, it's going to be upsetting when, when people don't get to have their shows the way they want to, and, and they're right to be angry. But what I would say to that is they should be angry at the studios and the companies. We, uh, the, our negotiating uh, team had very reasonable proposals. What we, what we are asking for is to fairly share uh, in the success of our work when it's successful for the companies. And what we're asking for is less than 2% Mm -hmm. of uh all of the profits that they make from our work alone and we had a list of proposals fair and reasonable proposals uh that the studios and companies roundly ignored they, they nine of the key proposals that would that would protect the the, the career of writing they in all the months that we were negotiating they never once countered on them that's right. not negotiating. Um, and that's, it's, we don't want to be out here, but we have to be out here and we will be out here for as long as it takes to get a fair deal. And to those people who are, who are going to miss their, their shows, once that, once that really starts to uh, show an effect, like I understand why you'd be angry and you should call the AMPTP and tell them to <laughs> come back to the table and make a fair deal with us. We're ready to do it. Yeah.
Well, it's, I mean, it, it affects the industry in different ways. Like the live shows, the night, you know, the talk shows every night, Saturday Night Live, they're off already. Uh, so the Star Trek series are kind of stocked up until next year. So Trek fans, who I think by and large are on your side. And that's another thing. I know the 0708 strike, which a lot of us remember, and, and I was there. That was about embracing the future and what the internet was going to bring. But I think the onset of social media let you all, I mean, it was a new wrinkle for everything. And I think the, the labor strike, for the first time, you all were able to appeal to the public and explain your case. And it wasn't, oh, this doesn't, this is a Hollywood thing, or, oh, it's those elitist writers. They're like actors. They're all rich, anyway, which is silly. But it's like anything. There's a 1%, 2%, and then there's everybody else. And there's people on the bottom, like you said, the entry level folks trying to get in and the people trying to have a living and pay their rent and have a family. But I really think the 0807 strike was a great job of not just getting the public on your side, but uh, of explaining the issues and getting it across and having, how does it feel like that's going so far this time? Uh, we, 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 uh, we have real union solidarity. Um, uh, there, we had a, a member meeting on the first week of our, of our strike uh, at the Shrine Auditorium mm -hmm. and uh, leaders from every major guild uh, came, uh, uh, came into the Shrine that day. Most notably, we had one of the executive directors for, for SAG-AFTRA, who is leading their negotiation, Duncan Crabtree, Ireland. We had John Avnet of the DGA. Uh, and, and most notably, we had uh, um, Michael uh, uh, T. Miller, uh, the, the uh, vice president um, of uh, TV and motion pictures for all of IATSE. Uh, and that was very different than the 07 strike. IATSE oh. was, was not... Uh, uh, on our side in 07 yeah. and this time they they they, they came out and and were uh um very supportive of what we're doing and and the teamsters uh lindsay o'doherty head of a local teamsters uh in, in los angeles uh she's amazing she also came out and spoke uh and uh, teamsters are are honoring our picket lines um and turning mm -hmm. away their trucks when they when they see our pickets. We, we have so much solidarity out here and that's that's really historic compared to the way uh, labor actions have, have been in the past. Right. And, and I'll, I'll say it again, I know I just said it, um, a lot of the things we're fighting for are the same things that, that mm -hmm. SAG-AFTRA is fighting for and that IOTSI will be fighting for eventually when they're up next uh, and that the DGA is about to start fighting for, what we're fighting for right now in their negotiations. So the gains that we make will will help labor in all of our other unions. and and. We were also joined by by uh, IBEW and uh, oh. by by uh, plasters and cement masons. Um, uh, it, it, there's been and uh, on the lines I've seen um, SEIU um, mm -hmm. uh, tag eight thirty nine has uh, the an an animation uh, writers and artists. They're out in, in force uh, um, supporting us. So there's been nothing but solidarity uh, yeah. on, on our lines. Well, the, the bottom line is this isn't about, we want 10%, well, we'll give you 5%. Okay, we'll settle for seven. I mean, it's not a number thing. This is a whole paradigm blowing up. What's it gonna look like moving forward? Are we gonna be independent contractors and gig to death? Or are we all gonna, because it'll, and that's how exactly. it is. Exactly, exactly. For the layman, uh, the uh, IATSE is everybody from, from electricians and gaffers to the art directors to the you know prop yeah. people and the set dressers, it's uh, it's it's so many. And yeah, I was just talking to Aaron Walkie a few a couple of weeks ago about how the tag, the animation people, had their contract last year. They made some gains, but they're thanks to Uncle Walt, they're still behind. They want to be why why a half hour of animation is not the same as a half hour of anim of of crime. <laughs> And uh, they, so yeah, their, your interest is in their interest is what yep. they want. Event. So yeah, everybody's got that show because it's blowing up the way, the way the industry works and, and people create and get paid for it and have a same creative life to bring to it. Exactly. Exactly. And, and yes, like uh, I, I, Aaron is a brilliant writer. Uh, mm -hmm. And just because he's right, you know, uh, it's a different union that, that covers uh, shows like Prodigy they should not be treated as second class writers. Pro Prodigy has some of the best writing I've, you know, I've seen oh, in yeah. Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and uh, um, 
and I, so we, we stand in solidarity with, with uh, 839 workers. Uh, right now, 839 writers have our backs. And when they are up for negotiating ne next, we will have their backs too. Mm -hmm. That's and, it. I, and I should add, I am also an 8 I'm a dual member. Uh, I, I, oh. I, 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 I write for animation also. Um, so uh, being uh, uh, protecting the rights of uh, 839 writers and artists is just as important to me as it is uh, to protect the, um, uh, to fight for the, the middle class in the WGA. Yeah. Well, and I, and I kind of shorted you at the beginning. You're, you were at least season one, you were a supervising producer. Yes. I don't know if you had a bump up that we'll see soon for season two. <laughs> season two, I'm also a supervising producer. Okay. okay. Um, and, and that we're writing, means, yeah. we were writing season three. Uh, um, we all, you know, we, we, every, when we went on strike, everybody, Everybody stopped writing, obviously. Pens down, um, pencils down, yeah. Pencils down, yes. <laughs> yeah. What's great is from top to, I say top to bottom, all that like entry level, you keep talking about middle class writers. When you're a producer, that means you've got some, you've had experience and you're able to climb that ladder, negotiate for something above the minimums. Because what we're talking yeah. about here are the, the minimums, what the entry level writers come into. And all this whole thing about the, this whole thing about the mini rooms, I mean, I started reading about that a couple of months ago. That whole thing about working on a pilot and then not getting paid for it or not getting hired onto the show you just developed is insane. It's, it's a way for, for uh, studios and companies to hedge their bets uh, because there, there's not production that they're chasing. They can dither around. Um, and what winds up happening is they're getting free development from, the, from all of these writers who then contractually are unable to go onto the shows if they ever do get made. And then the show, and then there's so much writing that needs to be uh, done after the mini room is over because they're very fast uh, and they require uh, a lot of work. So then the showrunner then winds up doing 10 times the amount of work once the staff is released. So mini rooms really are bad news for everybody. Everybody. For for the writers that are writing it, and for the and, and for the for the lower level writers that are supporting it, and for the showrunners who are running it, mini rooms are, are are bad news. It's a way that that studios and companies have yeah. have. Uh, it's another one of the loopholes that we've we've found that they're that they're they you know that that they've used yeah. to uh, 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 well, hold down labor. Ring yeah, ring more out of. It's a, congratulations, we bought your pilot. Uh, yeah. Bad news is you'll die doing it, and nobody. Yeah. Else will. <laughs> Basically, well, the thing that's got a lot of people's attention is kind of the shiny thing in the room here is the whole AI question, and and it, it's really not like it's going to happen tomorrow. But this is the the guild and the actors. Here's something they're you know everybody's involved on this too. Is what's going to be the real? How do we keep it in the box and not let somebody scum off everybody just because and and go do it sooner than than it could be done. I mean, yeah. you know, where is that on the spectrum of things? People love to talk about the AI, you know, threat coming down the line, but this is more about just getting out ahead of it, right? Well, it's critical. Right now it's critical. You know, chat GPT is still fairly new and already we're seeing, you know, that it can be used to gen mm -hmm. generate uh, scripts and they're not good, um, <laughs> but uh, but they can use that as, as a way to, and, and by the way, when a, what AI is doing is essentially plagiarism. It's it's using you, you can use the prompts to uh, uh, tell the AI to give you a script in the style of so and so writer. You know, you could say, mm -hmm. uh, "Can I have a science fiction uh, uh, opera, space opera in the style of Terry Metalis's Picard?" And it'll it'll give you something that mimics that style. That's that's plagiarism. And then um, and and. Right now, it's not very good, um, but what studios and companies could do is use that to uh, um, uh, generate drafts and then try to hire writers to rewrite it and make it good. But because the writer didn't originate it, uh, that'll be a loophole that they'll use. So that's why it's so important to fight it now. Um, and uh, it, it's growing fast. Um, so and, and the, the, the guild stance on this our stance on this is very simple. Writing has to be generated by a human being. That's it. And and the studios and that that is one of the proposals that the studios and the companies would not mm -hmm. uh, uh, engage us on. They never once countered on it. The only thing they said is that they they would not uh, they they don't want to uh, 
put limits on a technology they might want to use. And they, they did offer this. They said, tell you yeah. what, we'll, you may have heard about this. We'll offer you uh, uh, a, a workshop to talk about future technology. Yeah. Thanks. We'll have a meeting about it. Yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. This is this is the uh, one of your fellow writers, Philip Iskov. He's the one that had this post I caught this morning. The strike is costing the studios about thirty million a day in lost revenue, meaning in the fifteen days the WGA has been on strike, they've already lost four hundred fifty million, which is about the same amount you're asking for for three years. Yep. So the whole thing about pleading, I love how one and I'm saying this just reading the news. One week they're they're talking about their their huge profits the last quarter or two and then they started trying to plead poverty i don't know what's what that's about what do you what how do you think this is going to go on do you think somebody people are even saying this is meant to be the first of like that wall street that the you just flat out old school union busting that they want to try to bust after all these years um and the and the fact that hollywood the entertainment industry is still one of the best unionized shop which is i would say why it's such why we lead the world and why it, the output is such quality is because everybody has the security of a job. They're able to be, whether they're lighting a show or they're writing a show, they're able to do their best work. And that's why the United States leads the world in its entertainment output. And this is another take on that industry the way other industries have been hollowed out. And, um, I don't know. I That seems to be an emerging thing. Do you think that's catching on? Do you think that's what's going on here? It sounds... Yeah, I mean, the game. Yeah. I, I, again, I'll say it's, it, you know, a lot, a lot of the companies, we're not dealing with as many creative executives as we used to. A lot of the executives are beholden to Wall Street and they're more concerned with growth than they are with profit and revenues. Um, and uh, the tech companies uh, are historically not, not union friendly. All that said, uh, LA is a union town, uh, Hollywood is a union industry. We are a very strong union. Um, and we, I think they didn't expect us to stand up for the value that we create, to stand up for our work. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're all doing out here. That's what all these writers are doing out here is we are standing up for the value that we create. And we will stay out here standing up for the value that we create until they come back to the table and uh, make a fair deal with us. And we'll do that for as long as it takes. Yeah. I well, hope it's not long. I want everybody to get back to work. There's a lot right. of people that are that are affected by this, and I, I I don't want any of those people to be hurting, but we have to fight this right. fight right now because the people in in, in uh, all of the workers, uh, as I said, in, in the other uh, unions and guilds are are going to uh, get hit just as hard if we don't fight this fight right now. Well, I think the directors, the DGA, is start sitting down to start, and I they think are. the actors are next month on their negotiations, and everybody, yeah. you know. Everybody's watching you all and backing you all, but everybody's going to have to face this on their own. And I mean, the, the writers in the past have been the canary in the coal mine for everybody. It's, it's, it's like in real life. You guys are the first, <laughs> the first in the dominoes uh, to hopefully keep standing. So anyway, is anybody just by any chance, anybody else related to Star Trek in their past or present there around you? Or have you seen anybody today? I did. I, I saw it today. I saw uh um, Lisa Klink was in our line today, oh, um, yes. and uh, from from Voyager, uh, right. and we had a great chat. Um, and uh, um, I've, I've seen a, um, multiple uh, Trek writers uh, uh, in 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 our line uh, uh, over these last few weeks. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, uh, we're all we're all fighting. A lot for of the same are, thing. you know, a lot of them are socializing. Um, yeah and letting the message get out there and all. I would say that people have a, I have a fond memory. Of course, it was a lot of work and it came after, we were about two months in, in that day, that year. But the Trek Day strike um, got a lot of attention. There were other, some, there were other themes. That was a new, that was part of the social media revolution in 07 was, I, there, was a, there was a fantasy and horror theme day. Yeah. There was, a, I think Ron Moore had a Galactica writers theme picket at Universal, and the, but the Star Trek one out in front of Paramount was, was a real, and a lot of actors came by, and it was a memorable day. But that was like a month and a half in. That was yeah, that one went well, three months. Right. Yeah, that was a hundred days that that action, and uh, all of every time you know writers gather. I mean, in a weird way. 
just being on the line, it's like a, a uh, this is your life for every single writer. Like every day you bump into people that you've worked with from years, years and years ago. But it's, it's, it's or people that inspired you. Yes. Or, pe or exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've, I, and I've met lots of uh, people who I never, that I never thought I would get, get the chance to meet. And, and that's wonderful. That's solidarity. I, I will say it's, it's, you know, I don't want to diminish the, the, the importance of what we're, what we're doing out here. Um, I, 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 we are going to stand strong together and that, and that heartens me. Uh, and because we're writers, we'll be clever and we'll, you know, we will, we will have right. fun doing it, but it, it's very, you know, we, we don't, we don't do this lightly. This is, right. this is something that, that affects a lot of people in a lot of lives and, uh, uh, and it affects the future of our industry. Um, so, uh, you know, all of that is to, is to bring, you know, is to really bring to attention the message that, that we're fighting for a fair deal. A fair deal. That's well, we, the we, world. There's been a there's been a shift in the world and the way we consume and all the the business models, the payment, the employment models need to shift to adjust for that. And uh, yeah, yeah. Well, very good. Listen, I need to let you go. What, you have. I'm going to put you on the spot here. What's your sign say today, or are you generically pick, picketing today? <laughs> no, I, well, I, I I I I stepped over here without my sign, but it it says very simply. It's not a very clever one. Uh, it just says in as big letters as I possibly could write, fair deal now. FDN. Bill, well, thank you so much for joining us. I was, I, I'm not even going to try to look at questions here. Well, we can talk about it after you're off because you got to get back to the line. Thank and yeah, you, the, the bottom line, I mean, we, we're celebrating you and all the writers uh, and through our Trek prism. A lot of people have a lot of favorite shows. There, a lot of people enjoy the night talk shows and Saturday Night Live and all of all of that um, down the line. But uh, I think I'm hoping most of the public is with you and they get it. And when they see the the solidarity of all the guilds and they realize that whatever short term pain they're putting up with is worth it, because this is a big picture strike. I'm going to say it's going to determine things for a lot for the years to come. So. But we, I think most of us are all with you and behind you. Look forward to more, you know, whatever it takes to get this done. And, and thinking of all the ripple effect people who are not working right now. But, but they're sacrificing, too, and hopefully for a good outcome. Thank so, you, Larry. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank, you. thank and, you for covering this today. Uh, well, sure thing. Thanks for being part of my sixth anniversary show. But I wanted to do something. I, I went out last week and saw uh, Carlos Cisco and some of them over at Disney. There were some Trek people over there that I hadn't met yet, which was, again, a weird silver lining to all this. But what you said, this isn't about I mean, you could do all this at a screening or a convention, you know, <laughs> the reunion. Right. This is about what you're up to right now. And um, and, you know, hang in there. So WG thank you are strong. And uh, I look forward to the time, as we said, we can sit down and have a Star Trek talk. I look forward to that too. And I appreciate yeah. you covering this very important yeah. thing today. Appreciate sure thing. it a lot, Larry. Sure thing. And, and it's paid for already. So we are looking forward to Strange New World's debut here in about a month. So hopefully uh, it'd be wonderful to have all this over and done with by then, but whatever else, uh, we'll enjoy that. And think of you guys trying to keep uh, season three just as, uh, just as uh, up there. <laughs> okay, Thank Bill. you, Larry. Thanks for all taking right. the time today. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. All righty, kids. Well, there's a first. How about that? I meant to tease him about he needed to step away from his green screen a little bit. Um, there you go. Uh, Bill Wilkoff, supervising producer from Strange New Worlds. Uh, we're about to see his product, his product off the assembly line, you know, like applesauce. No, that's what that's all about uh, here in another month. So there's you a kickoff for uh, Strange New Worlds. Has anybody else in Trek punditry brought you a live report from the picket lines? A live report? I don't think so. But there you go. And maybe you've got a little more illumination there. Again, I say I'm, you know, a lot of the folks that you probably should have been following anyway, a lot of the writers present and past, uh, uh, Ted Sullivan, Carter Hall on his Instagram is putting out a lot. Uh, I mentioned Carlos Cisco and Eric Robbins, the two guys that I met going over to Disney a couple of weeks ago, did a video with them that we posted. I did a live with them, but it wasn't part of, you know, scheduled. So split screen there from the day. Um, it was pretty hot the last couple of days. They got a little bit of relief today. Anyway, so this was number one. If you want to join in on this next time around, uh, sometimes they're more fun. Sometimes there were some groundbreaking things and I just like taking the pulse. I don't get a huge feedback out of my, you know, 2,000 people on my list. Uh, I'd love to have even more, but we have 
you know, we have 5% here. So here's the deal. I broke those down. Again, I said, what is your favorite period of modern live action Trek? Not series, because I feel like series have gone through evolutions. <laughs> but what is your favorite era of modern, post-2017, live action Star Trek? So I gave, I broke it down. I split Discovery as season one, two, 23rd century um, Star Trek Discovery, and then 32nd century. Let's flip the digits. Uh, three and four. And then Picard one and two, even though I know people will argue that there's a huge difference between one and two, but I'm just going to say one and two together and then season three for Picard and then Strange New, obviously, for its one. And then some other ones. I, I like them, but I don't have a favorite. Oh, I love them all. Don't make me pick. Um, that's an enthusiasm scale there. And then um, I've, I'd rather pick one of the animateds, <laughs> which is interesting. If you feel fervently that way, I wanted to let you know. And then, of course, the I don't, I've never watched post 2017 Star Trek. I just kept it neutral that way. Here's how, here's what this poll came up. This was out Friday. People had till today at noon to vote. Got no votes. People who said was not their favorite. Discovery season three and four, surprisingly. And Picard season one and two. People said not their favorite. Again, we're not saying what do you hate. It's just what is your favorite era with with fudge factor options also. No one voted for Discovery season three four. No one voted for zero percent for Picard season one two. Now, I had a three point two percent return for I watch, but I don't have a favorite. Okay. Armchair Consumer Fan. We had a 4.8% return for Discovery Season 1 and 2. More enjoying the first two seasons of Discovery than the latter two. That's interesting. I've come across those people. I've enjoyed the show more the more it's gone on. But there you go. I need a rewatch, though. I will admit that. I've been looking forward to doing a rewatch at some point. Then we have a tie. 6.5%. A tie also up on the ladder. Uh, never watched post seven discovery and onward. Never watched it. Okay, that's tied also with. I'd rather pick one of the animateds. So I think we are up to the point where I can say yes. Oh, and then we jump up a little. Twelve point nine percent, almost thirteen percent said, I can't choose among them, which to me is like more enthusiastic about the whole thing than, eh, I just watch. I don't have a favorite. Basically, that gives us about a third of the pie. This leaves two choices. <laughs> You're going to be amazed. By one vote apiece, so there's a fraction of a point off, but basically 33.9%, 32.3% said Strange New Worlds first season. Uh, by one more vote, so a fraction of a point, uh, 33.9 said Picard season three. So basically we've got a pie of everybody answering in this poll. A third said variously one of the other seasons I don't watch. I'd rather vote for an animated or even no votes at all for early Picard and early discovery. I'm sorry, later discovery. A third of the pie said strange new worlds season one, a third of the pie said Picard season three, which is not outlandish, but it does show again when the dust settles, because I wondered, people were so in love with Strange New Worlds last year, I wondered where that lie, where that lay in the wake of the massive love affair with Picard, or it's seemingly so on socials. And yeah, people are in my newsletter, they're reading email, they're probably digital to some degree, but not everybody in fandom, much less in the world, is living on their socials, living and dying on their social channels, which is what I always try to caution folks. Online fandom is not the same as even convention fandom, which is not even the same as everybody getting up and going, doing their job and coming down and enjoying some Star Trek with their kids or not. That's armchair fandom. That's mass fandom. Not the same as totally convention. And those are cutting edge. 
those are people on the edge, but they're different edges. And there's a vast, vast majority, the great normal majority, as Will Rogers would say, of Star Trek fandom who aren't paying attention to all the drama of the day. So that's why it was interesting to me to see right now, a third of the fandom say their favorite era was Picard season three, a third said Strange New Worlds, and a third variously and other reporting eras and attitudes. Let's do, let's do this. So happy sixth anniversary. Here's a fun little give back. Um, yeah, I mean, when I'm at this position, what can we do here? So I appreciate everybody who is liking and subscribing the channel and sharing it and setting your alerts, setting the channel on YouTube, because that's what the world is looking at. So if you, the rules were, and I announced them on Friday, if you left a comment on any video on my channel and you were subscribed either already or you went to subscribe now, I've got everybody who qualified, and there weren't that many, but I've got everybody who qualified in here. I think there's 10. So this is going to be a winner from among you 10 that listen to directions. Okay. So here we go. Uh, this is for that. And if I don't, obviously, if I don't have your mailing address, I will need that. I'm paying for the postage. So here we go. And our winner is Jay-Z. Jay-Z, are you watching? Jay-Z left a comment. I don't know who Jay-Z is. Are you here, Jay-Z? Is, is that a YouTube euphemism app handle for... Um, for anybody else anybody else that's on with us today jay-z is the winner i'll tell you this gang i'll do it off camera but if i can't make contact with jay's i don't want to do it right now because i didn't say must be present to win so maybe i'll do that next time but uh, which you know that cuts out the people who can't be with us live who want to be supportive so i will off camera i will keep the 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 random picker here that i have uh i'll i'll um Keep this set up, and if I cannot make contact with Jay-Z, one of you others may get a... Uh, I'll, I'll post the winner when we do do it. Uh, you'll see it on my socials, and I'll mention it next week. Everybody, thank you so much for being in with me today. Trek well to everybody. Uh, thanks so much. Hey, this is my reminder, too, that it's turning into summer and the fall seasons, and if you're on vacation, if you're doing business in L.A. and you want to take a day, to visit some famous Trek locations. If you want your own customized away mission, <laughs> not on stages, out in the open, get with me. We'll set you up with the Trekland Treks. I'll work it out with you. The big ones, the little ones, we'll go to four places in a day, have lunch. I'll pick you up at your hotel, treklandtreks.com. It's awesome. And this week on the Trek Files, I haven't even mentioned the Trek Files. We've got a brand new show <clears throat> Thomas Marone from Star Trek Online. Yes, he of the cool ship making, who's had ships now become canonized thanks to, to uh, Picard. He's our guest, and we talk about one of his interests, uh, Gene and everyone else on original series Star Trek, their military lives, World War II generation, and its impact on Star Trek. And that, we've got a cool document. We've got a, a, some of Gene's military paper is our document of the week. You can catch it anywhere, but Trek Files Facebook page is where we've got the document and the link to the audio. Check that out, the Trek Files, and all the fine podcasts at roddenberry.com. Otherwise, around the horn, I'm Larry Nimichek at Twitter. Catch me there, Larry Nimichek's Trekland. Like and subscribe the YouTube. <laughs> As Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram, too. I'll be forwarding things that I see on Instagram from the writers and the strikers. Portal47.net is where you want to be. We've been really blessed the last few weeks. Things are finally opening up where we can talk to some of the recent shows. This month, and they don't even know it yet, this month, Patrick Stewart's stand-in for the last two seasons of Picard is going to be our Portal 47 guest night telebriefing guest. So I'm looking forward to catching up with what the modern TV set is like. Filmed right up the road at Santa Clarita. I love the backstage folks from the stage. They're a big part of what I'm about talking to. 
And I can't wait for that. Everybody, thank you so much. One real quick reminder, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, this Saturday for the Nichelle Nichols Foundation's latest hailing frequencies open. It's Walter Koenig and my shot to not interview him, but have a conversation. I only hope we can do as well uh, as the guys did on Shuttle Pod show when they had Walter on. Of course, our focus is going to be about Nichelle and her works and Walter's memories working with Nichelle, both on the show and in all these years since, as they both kind of reinvented pop culture. <laughs> that original series cast. That's happening. And then, yes, Monday is the Cisco Day. Apparently, it's the Cisco Day.com. It's on our chat. Uh, we'll be there. I'll be there with some interesting Avery slash Cisco slash DS9 re related hour. Be watching for the schedule to be announced coming up. Lots of fun things are coming up. And if you folks in the greater LA area, uh, be paying attention. Uh, there should be some news coming down the pike very soon. Um, that's it. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for these six years. Uh, I can't believe where we started, how it started, and where it's gone. That should be a thing. <clears throat> thank you, and thank you uh, to Bill Wolkoff again for joining us, for being able to take some time, brave the crazy tech wiring ability, but that's where we are now, which in itself is a symbol of what they're fighting for. Things change. It's time to not only grow up, but uh, be fair, and be fair to everybody involved. There's no shortage of money in the pipeline. Okay, everybody, so if I may be seeing you, I may see some folks tonight at this motion picture screening. I may 4K. I may see you, hopefully, maybe we'll see you in the chat room on Saturday, maybe on Monday. Lots of stuff going on. Of course, I'll see the Portales, a lot of you tomorrow night. Night for me, midday for you, or backwards. So, you know, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, however you're enjoying your trek, just, you know, be healthy, do all the things, stay woke, check your sources, and trek well, everybody. Thank you for six.